this is the second conga episode uh, for Dance Puppy. Welcome to the website. Uh, my name is Edgardo Cambon and I'm your percussion instructor. Um, today, on this second sort of class, I'm going to be teaching you a very basic pattern, uh, first on one conga, then in two congas, and then potentially we'll open up to a third drum. Um, and this is the basic tumbao rhythm, or marcha, as they call it in Cuba. Um, for uh, styles of music like son, guaracha, mambo, cha-cha-cha, guajira, etc. All those different styles of music, they draw from the same uh, music cell on one drum, which is the tumbao basic pattern. And it's one of the ABC <clears throat> patterns that you're going to be learning on the conga drum. So I'm just going to assume that you completed the level one class and you check the, the first video with the seven sounds and how to do um, how to execute properly all the seven sounds on the conga and then um, you're ready for for this chapter so without any further ado I'm gonna play it first slow and then I'm then I'm gonna break it down very very slow for you so here we go this is gonna be the uh, Waracha speed medium tempo speed First I'm going to play one conga drum, then I'm going to open up to two, just uh, for a minute, and then we break it down. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. floor so now let's break that pattern down very 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 slowly so it's a one bar pattern what that means is that the pattern is going to rotate in at first in one cycle of four beats or four counts one two three four mm -hmm. so I'm going to subdivide that even in two to start very very slow with you so if you're a right-handed player you're going to start with the back front or hilto as I said to you on the previous chapter that I didn't like to call it too much hilto remember it's not this this by the way is a soft tender part of your hand if you hit hard with this you can you know potentially injure yourself if you keep on doing it a lot and hopefully you're gonna be playing a lot of congas so start developing the right technique which is diving in shallow water or landing belly flopping really flat to get that base so your first two beats are going to be these, back, front. That's going to be followed by a slap. So once you did that back front, important, your left hand stays on the drum. So it is not this, but rather this, and I'm flat in the drum. Now I'm going to proceed with a slap with the opposite hand, which is my best hand if I'm right-handed. And that's going to be a press slap. Why is it a press slap? Because the opposite hand is in the drum. So, slow, heel, toe, slap, or back, front, slap. One and two. 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 There you go. Now I'm going to teach you what happens after the slap. So all I need you to do right now is to get used to that motion, is to hit the slap and play a front touch with the left hand right after the slap. So if this was B2, this is end of two or end of two. Two and, two and, two and, two and, two and. So, so far we have one and two and, one and two and, one and two and. 
Excellent. That's one of the reasons why I tell you from the beginning not to lift the hand. Because if you do this, one, and two, and then you're gonna have this hand up here. To do the front, you're gonna have your foot too far from the clutch. So you need to be down. One, and two, and. One, and two, and. Good. That action of doing that end of two is gonna push you away from the drum. That's when you're gonna take off again. One, and two, and, and you stay out. Again, let's do that slow. One, and two, and. And when I did that, I'm ready for another hilto, which is my three, and, slow. One, and, two, and, three, and, lift again, four, and. <clears throat> and I'm done with that count of four, four. Two very clear open tones at the end. So the whole thing is slow. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. <coughs> Make sure you let both opens ring. As sometimes the students do this, tone, muff, or they do something, they choke some of the sounds. Mm? The two open tones at the end are very important. Mm? So here we go, slow. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and Details. <clears throat> Notice that I leave my right hand resting on the drum as I'm playing that rhythm for almost anything that has to do with this because this hand can be resting there. It doesn't affect these sounds. It will affect at the end when I try to do the open tone. The only sound on the conga drum that definitely you cannot do having anything touching the drum is your open tone. And that's, I like to do that visual reference to it. Imagine the drum as an O, and if it's not fully open, this is going to be affected by anything you put. No matter what you put, you can't do an open tone unless it's fully clear to ring. <clears throat> so I'm using the gravity on my favor because I'm going to be playing this rhythm a lot. Uh, imagine that if you go to see a salsa band, whether they're playing Cuban timba or New York style salsa or salsa from Colombia, the conga drummer is going to be doing a, this rhythm or relevant rhythms to this and variations like this pretty much 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. So you need to really work in your energy <clears throat> and hold your energy and be able to speed up. So when I hit the slap and I stay there, rather than playing all light, playing all light, listen to the difference of the sound. When I dig in, I get the right sound. Now I'm going to play the same coordination with a light or incorrect approach. I'm doing the right motion, sort of. But I'm not digging in. It's very important because your marcha it depends on the masacote, the making of the dough, making the masa, and you really need to dig in. Or the dancers are not gonna feel you. The dancers need to feel your drive. mistakes as I say playing too light or you have to think of this I tell kids like a choo-choo train choo -choo 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 all eighth notes they need to be marked so we said this was in four beats right but the subdivision is eighth notes meaning that you're going 
one and two and three and four and or one two three four five six seven eight i have eight notes in one bar of tumbao dancers don't get confused just yet this is for the congueros right uh, we're going to clarify that in another video but right now understand that all those eighth notes they need to have the right value so if you just focus on your open and the rest is you're not giving to your left hand the value that needs to have so the dancers need to hear that Let's add the second drum. Now, when we're going to add the second drum, in the old days, people played with only one drum, and they did a lot of the sounds and a lot of everything in one drum. <clears throat> uh, I don't want to get into very controversial historical elements of this, but it's being said that Carlos Patato Valdez was one of the fundamental people, uh, may he rest in peace, that brought two congas and three congas into the bandstand. Some other people, uh, uh, they, they say that it was Candido Camero, who is still alive in New York City, I believe at age 92. Uh, substantial, fundamental people in the development of these this rhythms and this music. But in the old days, they only played with only one drum, and the congueros, congueros play very straight. They did a lot of things with only one drum, which is a great experience to do, practice a lot with only one drum. When we have these melodies around us, now we have a lot more voices. Huh? So let's just go right into teaching you how to play your basic tumbao on two drums. And then I'm gonna explain to you uh, how does this go in relationship to the Cuban clave. Mm -hmm. So for right now, I'm gonna teach it to you in such a way where now the pattern is going to fit in two counts of 4-4. Four, four. And in the first count of 4-4, four, four, I'm going to play my regular tumbao. And on the second count of 4-4, four, four, I'm going to go to the low drum. So it's going to sound like this. First bar. One and two and three and four and. Second bar. One and two and three. Front touch. Coming back. And three and four and. <clears throat> Slow. One and two and three and. second bar for a second. The second bar now is going to be heel, do, slap, and go to the low drum right away with nothing on this end. So this is B2, and this is the end of two. So this hand has to go really quick. One and two, and. One and two, and. Remember in the beginning of this class, of the previous class actually, we talked about different kinds of slaps. And this is going to be a kind of slap that I call it hit and go. Sometimes, some, uh, as a joke, I say whack and go, you know. Whack, and go. whack it and go. So basically, in essence, the technique that I'm doing is an open slap technique. When I gave you the technique for different slaps, I mentioned to you the regular slap, the press slap, and the open slap. This open slap technique is going to allow me to go really quick to the low drum. But look what happens with the open slap when I put the opposite hand on the drum. So it's almost no different than if I press it. So for that second bar, I don't need to rest and stay there and stop because I need to be on that drum really quick. So I'm going to practice this a lot. Heel toe. Heel to slap go, heel to slap and one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and so slow one and two and three one and two and three one and two and three now coming back from this drum I have alternatives for this hand the one that I just showed you was a front touch. 
and that was like this one and two and three and and as I do that and I'm gonna push myself away because I'm, I need to leave this O open for the two open tones with this hand again so it's gonna be one and two and three and four and slow one and two and three and four and slower one other options for this hand well if I want to play a little bit more of a little bit of a more of an aggressive style I can for lack of a better word I can put a slap there so I can do very good exercise for the left hand right you can hear the difference right or I can put a bass. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. I put another tone on the low drum, on the left left side drum. But I don't want to talk about this guy just yet. Huh? So right now we're playing everything as a right handed. If you are left handed, you need to invert all this and play it in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So here we go the two bar pattern and I'm going to start singing for you the clave rhythm just to give you an idea where does it fit one and two and one two three four one This will give you an idea where does that fit. What that means, because this pattern is a is a two bar pattern, that if I'm gonna re, I'm gonna reverse the clave, then I need to play my second bar in the first place. So it's gonna sound like this. Pa, pa. is that if I'm playing 3-2 clave, I'm going to be going to the low drum on the first bar, first count of 4-4. Four, four. Um, so uh, now, como dicen en español, echa la ley, echa la trampa, English. As you develop this kind of loss of this rhythm, everybody breaks them. Uh, one of the greatest of this style of music, Milton Cardona, which I want to dedicate this class because he just passed away, rest in peace, Milton Cardona. Who recorded with a lot of greatest like Willie Colon, Hector Lavo, and countless others in New York City. One of my mentors, not necessarily in person, but from listening to his music. He was renowned for breaking this rule and going to the low drum in the two side of the clave or combinations. You will hear a whole song played by him, and in some parts he'll go into the two side, and some parts he'll go into the three side because he, I would like to. Uh, suspect that he was leading himself more by what the melody and the feel of the music led him as far as playing this second drum rather than strict rules and that's an important concept that I want to give you about all of this that we give you the elements for you to be able to play this music properly but then you have to find your own feel to it your own interpretation of it without doing that Five minutes after you pick up the drum but eventually you're gonna to have to find your own voicing and listen to different styles etc now I'm gonna play for you this pattern uh, with a third drum just to add in a different element and I'm gonna be going uh, sometimes to one side and sometimes to the other side and I'm gonna break that out for you as well now this is supposed to be your second class and very likely in your second class you barely will be playing in two drums Okay, but we're kind of going ahead, so this is more like an intermediate uh, uh, level, but it's just for you to have a little bit of a progression of this. And before I go into this three drum pattern, I want to explain to you something that I said to you earlier. How is this possible that is used in cha-cha-cha, son, 
guaracha and mambo uh, can be used in Latin jazz. This is one of the rhythms that can be used in American pop music in 4-4 metric. Anything that fits in 4-4, it will fit in this part. Hmm? Well, because there are different styles. Um, in Although some of those styles have particular strokes within the tumbao, you could pretty much play the same pattern at different speeds if you're playing different styles. For instance, if I'm playing a cha-cha and the cowbell of the timbal is going at this speed. sell my basic tumbao but I start putting different different dynamics different sounds different tones I'm going a little bit to the left etc uh, let's just say I'm gonna be in a guaracha tempo and let's just mention uh, a song just to mention a popular song El Cuarto de Tula One, two, uh, uh. rhythm very slow with a metronome and then start increasing the speed and then start finding finding this rhythm within all the music that you love the most you hear you know something from Willy Colon, Hector Lavoe, Celia all those music that you've been listening your favorite Marc Anthony, Victor Manuel, Nietzsche from Colombia, Joe Arroyo, En los años mi se siento, pa, pa, a. start playing this rhythm with it you have amazing Capacity now is in the computers to reduce the speed of things. Use this music and what you're learning to really enjoy yourself playing along with it. So play along with it from, with recordings, play, play with a metronome, uh, play uh, tumbao with your friends, somebody sitting on the bongo, etc. Just uh, play at different speeds. The uh, the tumbao, as I said, is a rhythm cell from which a lot of different styles, when it comes to the conga, that doesn't necessarily mean that the other instruments in the band are not playing different patterns, but the conga, for instance, I can play guajira, guajira, and my guajira pattern would be like this. One, interpretation to play along with Guajira because it goes very well with the montuno of the piano. So if I play but it 
doesn't necessarily mean that that's Guajira. I'm going to put a stamp on it and force everybody to play Guajira that way. You can play Tumbao, your straight Tumbao, and you will be doing the correct job. But if you want to dig a little deeper, then you can start learning these different styles. And how you learn them? By taking lessons like this one or listening to a recording and do what is more what we can call dedicated listening. When you listen to the conguero and you go, oh, he just put a little extra open. Let's rewind the tape or CD. I saw it in YouTube. Back it up. What did he do there? Oh, he put an open right after the slap. So now I'm going to break this down for you. This Wajira pattern, very slow. So this was like this. One and two and. That's the first difference. I'm going to put an open tone right after the slap. One and two and. One and two and. Three and four and. That's the second difference. I'm going to a low drum already on the first count of four four. So slow. One and two and three and four and. So what it used to be one and two and three and four and is now one and two and three and four and. Second bar, the same. One and two and three. I can either go and four and or do what I did before, which is putting one single open to accent the three side of the clave, and then it's gonna be pa, 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 and that's to play very, very slow, right? Um, so there's gonna be so this is going to be your challenge to speed up that tumbao. How are you going to be able to speed it up? You need to do a lot of exercises for your left hand hiltos. So good exercises for that are the following. <clears throat> for instance, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and speed that up. Do subdivisions of that. One and two and three and four and one and two and double, double, double that. One and two and double, double, double that. just like me, you're going to probably try it from the get-go to go from zero to a hundred miles an hour. We are in America after all. Faster, better, quicker, louder. But you don't want to get cramps in here. You don't want to get pain in here. You don't want to get all that going on. So stick to the metronome. Stick to the metronome. Give yourself a good three to five minutes. Three to five minutes is an eternity. Five minutes is a hit on the radio around that sometimes even less than that. So control yourself. Give yourself the chance to get develop a good technique. Relax this. Do it with both hands, very, very slow. Mm -hmm. Um, so, as far as the chapter of Tumbao, there is a million, million and one different variations of Tumbao. <clears throat> uh, we can say one more important thing that I need to tell you uh, before closing this chapter for today is that when does the conga drummer opens up to two drums? The conguero opens up to two drums in essence, in, in very reduced essence, when the bongocero picks up the campana or sencero. What determines him opening up, and it's usually in sections of the song, like when the chorus comes in, or el coro, when the horn players are doing a mambo or an organized arranged horn section, uh, and over solos, horn solos, uh, electric guitar solos, 
never in general over a soft instrument. Uh, let's just say piano, Cuban tres, Puerto Rican cuatro, or any acoustic guitar. So you're not gonna be opening up to two drums over that. But in general, so and, and you can say at this moment, but Edgardo, what happens when there is no bongo cero in the band? Well, somebody's taking that role of that campana because otherwise we're not gonna be able to dance if we're playing Afro-Cuban dance music. So it could be a trap drummer with a bell, or it could be the timbalero that takes the role and does a double bell, or it could be somebody with a foot pedal, or if it's, it's a quintet and the only one who can do it is the, the singer. So the singer is singing his song with a guido, then he puts the guido down, picks up the campana. Okay, now we have the campana. But when I hear that bell, that's when I open up to two drums. It's not a free-for-all to play on two drums. Huh? So, uh, in essence, you need to be um, sensitive to the dynamics of the band. So if there is a lead vocalist singing, you usually during the verses, you, and all the songs are arranged for that. They're arranged, the music is arranged. The music was created, written, uh, and arranged, and rehearsed, so that's, why bands get together and they figure it, they put it all together. Uh, but sometimes the timbalero will open up to his bell, but the bongocero who is there present, he's not just yet in the campana. So I'm just gonna wait for him. The timbal already went into the bell, but that's not dictating me to open up into drums just yet. I'm gonna open up when the bongocero picks up the bell, we make eye contact and he's gonna go for it. Then, so you know, it's it's, it's uh, organic, it's gonna happen in the way it's supposed to happen, unless it's super arranged, sometimes there is a big break. Just to give you an example, the music is gonna be arranged by breaks, sections, etc. And once, when you know the music, you know the different sections and you say to yourself, oh, letter A or session A of the tune, I'm playing in one drum. Letter B, I'm already on two drums. Letter C, Coro, Pregón, I'm already in two drums. Mambo, I continue in two drums, etc. So um, it takes a lot of uh, time and dedication and practice to speed this rhythm up. You're gonna feel the left hand tired, uh, the, the one that is doing the heel toss, right? Uh, but if you're patient with yourself and you, you develop proper technique, you're gonna be able to go fast really quick. If you have any questions or you want any further information on this, uh, you can hopefully uh, contact me uh, through also Dance Papi, but you can also uh, search me in my website www.musicandela.com, musicandela.com, and uh, that's only one C and one L, musicandela.com, and also through Facebook at Edgardo Cambon. Um, and if you have any questions for me, please uh, reach reach out. I uh, have a lot of free downloads also for music uh, of my band and video clips of my band on that website. And I hope to see you from the bandstand when I'm playing with my band as a dancer or, uh, or, or uh, learning more from this. Please uh, stick around for a lot of more chapters that are coming up. This was number two and we'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you.